If it can't be grown, it must be mined, is a common expression that highlights the importance of the mining industry to civilization as we know it. Everything in society is dependent on the supply of raw materials, and mining is the world's primary industry. Mineral processing is just part of that industry, but is the most crucial part. To understand how important mineral processing is, we must go back a few hundred years. At the beginning of the 18th century, the demand for metals and minerals wasn't particularly high. High-grade deposits were treated in relatively shallow mines, drained mainly by almost horizontal tunnels called adits, as pumps driven by water wheels or mules were very inefficient. The photo on the right shows adits by a Cornish beach, still draining mines which closed down over 100 years ago. But later in the century, things began to change, due to an invention which would change the world and lead to the first industrial revolution, usually referred to as the industrial revolution. It was the steam engine which kick-started the industrial revolution and was particularly important in mining, as these engines could drive pumps and allow deeper mining in the quest for an increasing demand for raw materials to feed the machines which were replacing human operators. The first steam engines, the atmospheric engines invented by Thomas Newcomen, were adopted in many mines until James Watt developed a much improved engine in 1776, which was later refined by Cornish engineer Richard Trevithick. By the middle of the 19th century, world production of copper which is now regarded as the king of the industrial non-ferrous metals, was around 60,000 tonnes, its main use being for piping and for production of alloys such as brass and bronze. Compare that with current world production of copper of around 20 million tonnes per year. The mines in Cornwall in southwest England were then the world's biggest producers of copper and tin, mainly from the minerals chalcopyrite and cassiterite respectively. And fortunately, fairly crude and simple methods were available to, to upgrade the ores to a level of concentration suitable for economic smelting. The tin ores contained around 1% tin and comminution was required to break the ore to a size fine enough to liberate the cassiterite from the waste minerals. This was accomplished using batteries of stamp mills driven by the ubiquitous steam engine. The ground ore was then concentrated to over 50% tin using simple gravity separation devices such as rag frames shown here and buddles. Rag frames and buddles are now long obsolete. In the mid 19th century there were still many high grade deposits of copper been worked in Cornwall, often containing more than 10% copper. The jaw crusher was invented in 1858 and concentration of the ore prior to smelting was by hand sorting, with simple jigging being used for fine particles. The second industrial revolution took place in the late 19th century with the introduction of electricity generation at central power stations. The demand for metals increased particularly for copper, where there was a tenfold increase in demand. Cornish mining, which had been supplying most of the world's copper, was already in deep decline and there was an urgent need to find new sources of this critical metal. There were huge deposits of copper in the Americas, but they were fine-grained and of low grade and could not be effectively upgraded by the only two mineral processing techniques then available, gravity concentration and hand sorting. The mining industry faced an existential crisis, as did the new society, so the search was on for a technique which could be used to upgrade the copper minerals in these vast deposits. An ingenious technique was developed and patented in 1904. Froth flotation transformed the minerals industry and it is often said to be the most important technological development since the discovery of smelting over 8,000 years ago. 
The invention of froth flotation also led to the rapid development of mineral processing as a distinct profession and chairs in mineral processing sprang up in mining universities around the world. Throughout the 20th century, flotation continued to evolve with the development of more efficient machines and chemicals so that there are now very few mines in the world which do not have flotation somewhere in their flow sheets. It is hard to overestimate the importance of flotation and to imagine a world without it, where the essential societal metals, copper, zinc, lead, nickel, cobalt, would be classified as precious metals, uneconomic to produce at large scale. And today, well over 100 years since Elmore's patent, flotation still dominates the minerals industry, notwithstanding other developments in concentration methods, such as enhanced gravity separation, magnetic and electrical separation, and ironically, sorting, not by hand as in the 19th century, but with the aid of very powerful computers. Flotation is still the most intensively researched concentration method as it has had to adapt to the, tr to the treatment of ores of rapidly declining grade and increasing complexity and to the concentration of ores of high-tech metals such as lithium and rare earths, which had little use a few decades ago. And what of the future? We are now entering the latest industrial revolution, the era of 5G, electric vehicles and renewable energy, all increasing the pressure on the mining industry to supply more and more raw materials. Each new electric car, for instance, will need around 100 kilograms of copper. And a large wind turbine requires over four and a half tons of copper and around two tons of the rare earth metal neodymium. So huge increases in mineral production will be needed to satisfy the needs of this new revolution. New sources of lithium, for instance, will need to be found for the batteries in electric vehicles. Indium is an important element in touchscreens, but it is produced in only very small quantities from the mining of zinc ores, and the sheer number of smartphones, tablets, etc. produced each year requires around 700 tonnes of indium. Recent estimates suggest that total reserves are only around 16,000 tonnes, however, highlighting that metals are from very finite resources. Copper is mined in vast amounts, around 20 million tonnes per year, so mines would have to ramp up production considerably to satisfy the extra 7% predicted demand, and all at a time when ores are becoming leaner and more complex. So where will all this extra production come from? Innovations in mineral processing have enabled extraction of minerals from secondary resources, such as the tailings from older mines, which contain values which could not be recovered by the technology of decades ago. Although the grade of these secondary deposits are very low, their treatment has the advantage of very low mining costs no drilling and blasting being required, merely the sluicing of the material by high pressure water monitors. Also comminution requirements are minimal. Some metals such as copper and lead can be recycled at the end of life of a commodity, but enormous amounts of many metals are used to produce electrical and electronic equipment. Almost two billion smartphones now being produced each year. Mineral processors around the world are carrying out intensive research in order to recycle metals in waste electrical and electronic equipment. But the challenges are enormous due to the tiny amounts in each device and the fact that many of the metals are alloyed with other elements. Due to the difficulties in recycling, we live in what is essentially a linear economy. But the holy grail of modern society is a circular economy where nothing is wasted. At the end of the life of a commodity it is brought back into the loop and recycled so that the amount of waste is minimal. The challenges are immense but if this is ever achieved 
it is a fair bet that the technology which will play a major role is mineral processing, which can truly claim to be the world's most important technology.